Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. My name is David Talbot. I'm Managing Director and Head of Research at Red Cloud Securities, and I'm delighted to host another webinar on uranium today. We are going to hear from Sky Harbor CEO Jordan Trimble. And now, during today's webinar, he will provide an overview and outlook. Then we'll take some questions. You can type your questions into the chat box at any time, and we'll get to as many as we can. But before we kick things off, first we need to discuss the fine print. During this webinar, forward-looking statements may be made. I would direct forward-looking. I would direct listeners to the forward-looking statements outlined on page two of Sky Harbor's corporate presentation. That can be found on their website, skyharborltd.com, and Sky Harbor being spelled out with the O U R at the end. So for Red Cloud Securities, I'd highlight this webinar is for information purposes only. It should not be considered a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell securities. We note this call does not consider the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigation, seek their own professional advice before investing. So please see our most recent research located on the Red Cloud website for specific disclosures on Sky Harbor Resources. With that, I now turn it over to Jordan to update the audience on, on the company. Great. Thank you, Dave. And uh, thank you, everyone, for taking the time today. Um, please do use the Q&A chat and uh, happy to address any questions, comments at the end here. I'll, I'll try to keep this um, as short and sweet as I can, given uh, it's a very exciting time for the company uh, and for our shareholders. Uh, we're in the midst of a major 10,000 meter, dr uh, meter drill program at a Russell Lake project, uh, co-flagship project we're acquiring from Rio Tinto. I think most of you are familiar now with this property. Uh, we are making very, very good headway. We're, we're very, very happy with what we're seeing thus far. Um, we're about in the middle of the program right now, and uh, we're about to, uh, about to start our third phase of drilling there. This will take us right into June, and we'll start having some numbers and some results to report on over the coming weeks and months. I'll talk a little bit more about that program here later on in the presentation. But in addition to that, uh, we've also started a mineral resource estimate uh, at our Moore Lake project, which we, we should have out later this year. We are planning uh, as well uh, additional drilling uh, and exploration programs at Moore Lake in conjunction with the work we're doing at Russell Lake. Again, these two properties adjacent to each other and um, it, uh, it, it really uh, fortifies our position uh, now acquiring Russell Lake, right between, uh, all the ground between MacArthur River and the Key Lake Mill. So a um, lot to talk about there, but you'll see also with the news this morning. So we've acquired South Dufferin, 100% owned project, owned by D uh, Denison. Uh, most of you know Denison's a big uh, shareholder of Sky Harbor, and uh, they've, been, they've added to that position now. Uh, they've been a strategic partner. Dave Cates, their president, CEO, is on our board. So this is a property that's uh, basically coming into the fold with our prospect generator business, and we are going to look to subsequently option or JV this property out. So, um, Dave, can we do we have the slides up here? Just want to make yeah, sure. Yeah, slides are up. I can see them. Perfect. Okay, great. So, uh, forward-looking statements, please, everyone, uh, read through those at your own. Uh, when you have some time. Okay, so investment highlights, people, timing, and projects. Um, as you, most of you know, Sky Harbor, we've been around for 10 years. We've been looking for high-grade uranium in the Athabasca now for almost a decade. We've, been, we've built one of the largest property packages of any company in the Athabasca. Uh, we now have over half a million hectares with the addition of South Dufferin. So you know, as I've said before, Sky Harbor, we're building this up to be a one-stop shop for high-grade uranium exploration discovery potential across numerous projects, various operators as a part of our prospect generator business. We're utilizing this dual-pronged strategy where we have focused exploration and drilling uh, at our, our core projects of Russell and Moore Lake. Uh, these are two advanced stage exploration assets. Uh, and then we couple that with prospect generation and bringing in partner companies, uh, strategic partner companies to advance our secondary projects. And again, we've continued to add to this inventory of properties in this mineral tenure. Uh, South Dufferin this morning, we announced additional staking last week. 
We've been able to monetize these secondary projects through these option and JV deals that we've signed now with seven companies. We're working on several more as well. Uh, these option agreements uh, total over 70 million in project consideration, uh, including exploration funded by partners, cash and shares from these partner companies as well. So seven uh, option agreements, two of which are now joint ventures. Uh, we're looking to add to that. And uh, again, we've continued to uh, bolster that portfolio of secondary projects to continue to grow that side of the business. So uh, for those not familiar with who we are, management team, board of directors, um, we, we built a, a, a very good mix of uh, capital markets and management, uh, managerial uh, experience at the board level, at the management level, coupled with uh, focused uranium exploration expertise in the Athabasca Basin. So I, I started the company with uh, my chairman, Jim Pettit, and our geological team in Saskatoon back in 2013. Uh, started acquiring uranium projects uh, at the really the bottom of the bear market in the mid-2010s. Uh, we were able to take advantage of uh, depressed uh, valuations in prices. And one, one thing uh, just on that note, um, that I'd, I'd like to kind of re-highlight here um, is just the disconnect um, that we saw and that we still see uh, relative to higher uranium price environments. Uh, so if you look at the portfolio that we've now built, again, over half a million hectares across 24 projects, well, one or three of those properties that we have in this now uh, 24 project portfolio, three of those properties were in a company in the mid 2000s, uh, 2006, 2007, when uranium price was north of $100 a pound. Those three projects were in a company that was valued at over $400 million. So it just shows the kind of re-rating potential that we still can see um, as the uranium prices, uh, price continues to move higher. So uh, getting back to the, the team here, so uh, worked with, with uh, Jim and our team in Saskatoon initially to start acquiring these projects. We built the portfolio up nicely. Uh, Dave Cates, as I mentioned earlier, uh, joined as a director or has been a director now since 2016. And we've done a couple of deals with Denison. They remain uh, our largest strategic corporate shareholder, having added to that now with the recent transaction that we've just announced here at South Dufferin. Uh, Dave personally is quite a large shareholder uh, as well. Uh, Joe Gallucci joined us uh, as an independent director several years ago. He's the uh, head of investment banking now at Laurentian Bank, so brings a lot of capital markets experience to the board and to our team. Um, our geological team is headed up by Dave Billard in Saskatoon. So Dave's worked in the uranium exploration business for almost 40 years. He was at Cameco. He's made several discoveries and he built and sold a company called JNR Resources. Just a quick note there, JNR was bought out by Denison and South Dufferin, this, this recent acquisition that we've just announced was a JNR project. So we've had this property in our crosshairs for a little while uh, and uh, very excited to uh, finally announce the, the deal this morning with Denison. Christine McKechnie, who's now our senior project geologist. So Christine joined us about seven years ago. Uh, wealth of information and knowledge in uranium exploration in the Athabasca Basin, basically spent her entire career in northern Saskatchewan and wrote an award-winning thesis on one of our deposits, the Fraser Lakes Zombie Deposit at our South Falcon project. Rounding out the team, uh, you'll see Paul Matizic uh, joined us as an advisor in 2016. Uh, he's built and sold half a dozen mining companies very well known uh, in the industry. And again, uh, ultimately at Sky Harbor, we are working towards a sale of the company. Andrew Rancharan joined us back in uh, just over a year ago, uh, brings a, a wealth of mining experience and knowledge uh, to the management team, joined us as our senior VP of corporate development over 20 years in the industry. Uh, he worked at Sprott and at our SRK back in the mid 2000s uh, and uh, worked with several uranium companies uh, during his tenure at uh, those companies. Uh, after that, he joined uh, I Am Gold as their corporate development manager. So uh, very, very happy to have Andrew on the team. Moving on to the capital structure, this is just recently updated as we have had uh, warrants uh, that are in the money that basically have now all come in that, were, that are expiring uh, early next week. So we now have about 153 
0.5 million shares issued in outstanding. We're trading at a, a 55 to 60 million dollar valuation. Again, you know, I talk about the the previous cycles and 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 the kind of uh, valuations and market caps that we saw back when the uranium price was trading much higher. Uh, we're we're I, I think we're still in the very early early innings of this uranium bull market. Uh, you'll see here uh, well funded with over five and a half million in the treasury. Again, we've got some hard dollars recently. Uh, with the recent exercise of uh, some of the last in the money warrants that we have there. Um, we've, uh, uh, you'll see here as well, some of the notable and strategic shareholders, uh, management and insiders, uh, as you'll see with the CDI filings, I've been actively purchasing shares in the open market. Um, I think again, uh, the value proposition for Sky Harbor, given the portfolio, given the catalyst we have coming up uh, is as strong as it's ever been. Uh, Dennis and Mines, uh, they've now just added to their uh, existing position, Rio Tinto, uh, also a large corporate shareholder through the property acquisition at Russell Lake. And we're in all of the, uh, or most of the major uranium mining ETFs, as you'll see there, and have strong, uh, a strong institutional and family office shareholder base. It's really kind of transitioned from almost entirely retail about four or five years ago to much more of a, a, an institutional shareholder base. One last note too here, uh, with all of the option partners uh, and payments that we're expecting to receive over the next 12 months, we should be getting about three and a half to four million dollars in cash and stock from all of the option partners that we have. And that actually escalates over the next several years. So each year we are receiving cash and stock from these partner companies. Happy to talk a little bit more about that later on in the presentation or in, or in the Q&A. Um, so I won't spend a ton of time on these slides as I think probably anyone and everyone on this webinar is, is familiar enough with the uranium market. But um, when, we, uh, when we talk about uranium and we talk about the nuclear industry uh, and, the, and really the, the resurgence or the renaissance we're seeing in this industry, it's really kind of three major macro trends underpinning this. So electrification, the need for more electricity globally, decarbonization and clean energy. Nuclear is the only source of baseload emissions free, safe, affordable, reliable uh, electricity generation uh, that we have available. And last but not least, energy security and independence as we see the market uh, continue to bifurcate east versus west. Uh, the west and western utilities has been overly reliant on uh, supply, cheap supply from eastern sources. And uh, that's, that's unraveling right now. And going forward, western utilities in particular are going to have to start shoring up material from Western suppliers. In fact, just in the last few weeks here, we have seen the spot price uh, start to tick higher or north of $53 a pound. Uh, and uh, we're hearing that uh, it's US utilities that have RFPs that have been in the market for a little while, not catching anyone, uh, not, not being able to get any deals done on that. Uh, and so they are looking to step or they are stepping into the spot market now. And that's, that's a real interesting development. Uh, and actually, if we just move on to this slide here, talking about the uh, supply demand fundamentals, just draw your attention to the bottom right image here. So this just shows the utility uncommitted demand. And, and this is what's, what's happening right now, as I just pointed out with some of these utilities stepping into the spot market or other utilities potentially stepping in there. Uh, when you have the uh, sheer amount of uh, uncovered requirements or uncommitted demand as we have, you'll see the numbers there quite staggering um, over the next uh, 10 years or so, hundreds of millions of pounds of uncovered requirements. Eventually what happens is uh, utilities will have to step into the spot market and historically the new contracting cycle, new utility procurement cycles are really what drive this metal price as we saw in the mid 2000s uh, and we saw in 2010 and 2011. We are now seeing that contracting market really pick up and we're seeing it also now uh, uh, result in utilities having to step into other markets uh, to again shore up material. Uh, last year, we saw about 120 to 125 million pounds of contracted material up from 100 the year before, up from 80 to 90 the year before that. So we're seeing a steady increase in volumes. When we get up to the replacement rate of about 180 million pounds of 
contracting uh, annually. That usually corresponds with a fairly significant increase in the uranium prices we saw in the uh, mid 2000s. And I think we will reach those volumes here in the coming year. So very exciting time and inflection point, if you will, uh, in, uh, in the industry right now. And just to cover off some of the other numbers, uh, uh, again, um, significant growth uh, in nuclear power generation, 400 and almost 40 reactors currently operating, uh, 58 reactors uh, currently under construction and hundreds more ordered, planned and proposed. Major supply deficit that's formed here, 190 to 200 million pounds of uh, uh, annual demand, and that's in the backdrop of about 140 to 145 million pounds of primary mines, but we're simply not producing enough. And that supply demand imbalance is exacerbated in the West. Uh, the West just, again, is not producing enough uranium for its needs for Western utilities going forward. Uh, and that's where companies like Sky Harbor and, and other uranium companies in the West uh, stand to benefit, to provide that fuel uh, for these reactors and the next generation of nuclear reactors, including SMRs uh, that are being uh, commercialized and built uh, in the West. Uh, again, China has been at the forefront of this growth in demand recently and will continue to be going forward. Plans for 150 nuclear power plants over the next 15 years, more nuclear capacity coming on there in the next 15 years and has come on globally in the last 35. But we've basically seen pretty much every country um, either reverse their anti-nuclear energy policy and or double down on their pro-nuclear energy policy. So uh, we're seeing a, a lot of uh, positive developments and tailwinds and that, that will ultimately lead to higher uranium prices uh, going forward. So uh, I'll move on to our projects as I do wanna leave some time for Q&A. Um, just a couple of quick notes here. You'll see some of the comps uh, more uh, recently. We just updated this in the Athabasca Basin. So, you know, it's 55 to or $60 million valuation. I think uh, we, we offer a lot of value here given the asset base and given uh, all of the exploration and drilling we're carrying out and our partner companies are carrying out. Um, You'll see here uh, the project portfolio map. Again, this has just been updated to include South Dufferin and the properties that we announced we state last week. So again, this is over half a million hectares, over 1.2 million acres of properties in northern Saskatchewan in the Athabasca Basin. We're in the top five mineral tenure uh, holders uh, by acreage in the Athabasca. We've got pretty much every region or sub-region of the basin covered. The South Dufferin project in particular uh, is in that middle southern part of the Athabasca Basin, just south of the high-grade Centennial deposit. Uh, this is an area that we did not have much exposure to previously. So again, very happy to add that to the portfolio. But you'll see the main projects over on the eastern side of the Athabasca Basin. So Russell Lake and more, the two co-flagship projects representing about 100, just under 110,000 hectares of uh, advanced exploration, acreage, and properties in really the heart of the eastern side of the Athabasca Basin, just uh, south of MacArthur and north of Key Lake. The road accessing uh, or servicing the MacArthur River mine runs right through the western claims of Russell Lake, and uh, we have this 10,000 meter drill program that we're well into now, as I said earlier, very, very pleased with what we're seeing. Um, as, as most of you are probably aware of, we've, you know, we did the deal on this project with Rio Tinto, it took us a little while to negotiate those terms and, and, and uh, bring them in as a strategic uh, shareholder uh, and, uh, and also structure the deal in a way that was manageable for us in that we can initially earn a 51% stake through some cash and share payments, which have already been made, and then through some exploration expenditures. We're now well into that uh, three-year uh, spend. Um, in fact, we're, we'll likely have that uh, five point, what works out to about net $5.2 million uh, spent, we'll likely have that complete by this time next year. And at that point, we'll have earned the 51%, and then we can either elect to uh, form the JV with Rio and or continue on to 70, and ultimately, if we want, to 100%. But uh, we announced earlier in the year the commencement of this inaugural 10,000 meter drill program uh, on this project. Uh, the history here is, uh, is, is, is quite, quite interesting, a property that 
It's had a fair bit of historical work in drilling, uh, but a lot of that historical exploration uh, included widely spaced drill fences and reconnaissance drilling. So no previous operator really went in there and tightened up some of these these drill fences, at least not at most of the target areas that, that are of interest. There's many, many kilometers of prospective conductive corridors. There's high grade multi percent uranium in some of the historical drill holes. So we know that there's the right geology uh, for high grade uranium deposits. You're on that main mine trend on the eastern part of the basin. So what we're doing now is we're going in and doing uh, a carrying out drilling that is a little more systematic in nature in that we're infilling between some of these four or 500 meter uh, drill fences that on in some cases have mineralization on both sides of the fences, but for whatever reason, the previous operators did not go in and, and tighten up uh, that spacing. It's, it's uh, in our view, a, a ripe project for a new discovery, a high grade discovery, and we're, vect we, we're very confident that we're vectoring in on that right now. So uh, look out for news on that. As I said, uh, we're, we're making great progress there. Uh, we're seeing everything we wanna be seeing and uh, we, we are waiting on the first batch of numbers to come in and we'll have lots of news uh, on assays right through the summer months into the fall with plans to continue drilling there later this year. And so we'll, we'll have some news out on that um, later on this summer once we do get uh, the numbers back from this initial 10,000 meter drill program. But this will be an ongoing exploration program. And coupled with that will be additional work and drilling at the adjacent Moore Lake project, which uh, has been the, the flagship, uh, now a co-flagship with Russell. But this project is host to the high grade Maverick zone um, where we've been actively exploring uh, over the last six years, uh, we've had drill results as high as 21% U308 over a meter and a half. That was within 6% over six meters. Uh, more recently, we've had success uh, discovering new high grade zones in the basement rock, including 6.8% U308 over two meters. Um, that's open at depth at the East Maverick zone. So again, we would like to continue exploring and expanding that zone. Uh, we, we will likely do that in conjunction with drill uh, future drill programs at Russell Lake. Uh, the access to Moore Lake is from our camp at Russell Lake uh, and uh, from the road that services the MacArthur River Mine. So uh, one, one other uh, note to make there is just the, the operational synergies with Russell and Moore. Having the camp, having the road access uh, power lines at Russell uh, will bring our drill costs down at Moore Lake going forward. And as I mentioned earlier, we have engaged a group to uh, carry out a uh, 43101 mineral resource estimate. So keep an eye out for news out on that later this year. And we're also now internally looking at the prospects uh, and the potential economics of extraction using either SABER or ISR uh, at uh, the, these high grade mineralized zones uh, along this Maverick corridor. So more on that to come later this year. Um, Moving on to the prospect generator business. So uh, again, this is this has been um, a part of our company that's really kind of come into its own and grown a lot in the last several years, as you'll see here. And as I pointed out earlier, we've now signed option agreements with seven, seven different companies. We are working on bringing in a couple of other new companies and partners at some of our other 100% owned projects that we haven't optioned or JV'd out yet. So keep an eye out for news out on that, but you'll see here, a good snapshot of these properties and these partnerships. So uh, just under 35 million in partner funded exploration across those projects, the, the, the vast majority of that is yet to be spent. Uh, upwards of uh, 15, just under 15 million in cash payments and well over 22 million in stock being issued to Sky Harbor from these partner uh, companies. Uh, so as I pointed out earlier, we, we are expecting, now this is assuming that all these partner companies complete their respective earnings, uh, but we are expecting between three and a half to four million in cash and stock coming in uh, over the next 12 months. So uh, we're well funded uh, to, to advance the, 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 the co-flagship projects of Moore and Russell Lake uh, using that money and some of the money that's come in from the warrant exercises over the last uh, six or seven months. Uh, as far as the partner companies are concerned, uh, they've been very active. Um, and uh, what I'll do is I'll actually just, I won't spend a ton of time on any one in particular, but I'll just work through uh, the last few remaining slides here. So South Falcon, which is a, an option agreement, our, our 
richest option agreement to date. We announced late last year, it closed earlier this year with Tisdale Energy. Uh, it's a $22 million option agreement, about half of that in exploration expenditures, the other half in cash and shares. This is host to the Fraser Lakes Zone B deposit uh, and a highly, highly prospective project for additional uh, uranium discoveries. Tisdale is planning a drill program currently for later this year. This is an advanced stage exploration asset that is drill ready. So the next thing to, to do here is to get a drill rig there. So we will have some news out as will Tisdale on plans for this upcoming program. Uh, very, very excited for them to get to work here. Uh, as some of you may may remember, we actually did, uh, we, we funded a, a fair bit of work at this project uh, back in uh, this time last year, uh, just to kind of get it ready for a larger uh, option agreement and new partner to come in. So very, very excited uh, to have the work uh, commence there later this year. Um, South Dufferin, uh, as I highlighted earlier, new acquisition um, on uh, in the middle uh, southern part of the Athabasca Basin. We did have a claim there, a very small 900 hectare claim. So basically the deal that uh, we've done with Denison here uh, creates a, a real project uh, of significant size at 13,000 hectares, 10 claims. Um, covers the extension of the Virgin River Shear Zone, uh, and just to the north, you've got the Centennial Deposit, uh, owned and operated uh, by Cameco, very high-grade uh, uranium deposit. You'll see, uh, and of, of, of uh, worth noting here, are the conductors that host that high-grade mineralization to the north. Those trend right down onto our property. This is a drill-ready property. We are entertaining uh, partner companies. Uh, we will be entertaining partner companies to come in here and advance this project as we stay focused on our two primary projects at Russell and Moore Lake. Uh, but but very, very happy to finally get this deal done. And uh, it's a, a substantial acquisition uh, and fits in very nicely with the other 100% owned uh, projects uh, that we are actively looking to option or JV out. Um, Preston uh, is now a joint venture with uh, Arano. Um, it's been quiet there the last couple of years, um, but um, we'll see what uh, if there's any plans for future exploration uh, later this year, early next year. Uh, it's basically all the ground south of NextGen's uh, project, and you'll see the road that services that used to service the Clough Lake mine that runs up through the property. Um, so keep an eye out later this year. I'm sure we'll get an update on any future work that is being planned uh, at that property. But adjacent to that is the East Preston project, where Azincourt is now uh, the majority holder of the project and the operator, and they've done a fantastic job advancing this project. They've just completed 3,000 meter drill program. Assays are pending for uh, from that program. Uh, they did uh, successfully intersect radioactive uh, mineralization. Uh, so we'll see what the final numbers do come back as, but uh, making great progress here. Um, this is a property where uh, we, we basically acquired this through staking years and years ago, uh, and it's come a long way. And I, I truly believe uh, with additional drilling and, and exploration at the project, there's uh, a high grade discovery that will be made there. So, um, so that's the update at East Preston. Uh, look out for, again, assays and then plans on future programs at uh, East Preston uh, over the next several months. Hook Lake, uh, which is currently under option to Valor. Valor completed some drilling and some exploration at that project uh, over the last several years. They're nearing completion of the earn-in at this property. They have uh, some final cash payments to make, and then they will form a 80-20% uh, JV with us at the project. Uh, we expect some news flow on this over the next uh, six to eight months in terms of future exploration uh, plans and uh, Moving on to Yurchison, uh, so Yurchison Madero Mining, um, we just optioned this project to them about a year and a half ago. Um, they did a little bit of work there uh, last year, but they do have plans to carry out a drill program later this year at Yurchison. And uh, uh, so we'll, we'll get the final budget and final plans for that program, but excited to have them actually get the drill rig there. It's road accessible, um, relatively easy to get to some of the main targets there, and it's actually got 
um, other showings, polymetallic showings, in addition to uh, the handful of uranium showings that will likely be drill tested uh, later this year. Man Lake, uh, so Basin Uranium Corp has done a great job advancing this project. They're working their way through that earn-in option. Uh, they still have a bit of money to spend here over the next year and a half or so. Just announced uh, some uh, from uh, two initial phases of drilling, some very encouraging results. Um, I think they're, they're onto something here as well. Uh, there's um, anomalous uranium uh, and, uh, and, and a, a whole bunch of indicator minerals very good structure in the drill core. Uh, it's a little bit deeper, but it's, uh, as you'll see with the location you know, on that main mine trend, uh, again, on the eastern side of the Athabasca Basin. So we are expecting additional exploration and, and work programs from them over the next 12 uh, to 18 months. So, uh, and then uh, last but not least, Wally and USAM. Uh, this is a more recent option agreement that we signed with a Australian company, Yellow Rocks, uh, just waiting to get word on any plans and exploration that they have uh, uh, coming up on this on, on these two properties. They still are uh, working on listing. Uh, the the, the um, option agreement is, um, it, it requires them to list. So. Uh, they're, they're still uh, in the middle of that process, but assuming that gets done, I expect we'll see them get to work at these two larger property uh, packages on the northeastern part of the Athabasca Basin. Now, just to wrap up here with the prospect generator business. Um, so uh, you'll see here uh, some of the newly acquired staked properties that we announced last week. We've got about a dozen or so 100% owned projects um, that scattered throughout the Athabasca Basin, again, kind of covering every sub-region of the basin. Uh, these properties are 100% um, uh, owned by Sky Harbor. Uh, we can look to option or JV them out. We are in talks right now with a few groups on a few of these. I expect you will see some uh, additional announcements on uh, some of these properties being optioned or JV'd out. Uh, we continue to add to the inventory of these properties, uh, as I pointed out. Um, this has been, again, a part of the business that, that has grown quite a bit, and it, it helps bring in some cash and stock. It helps ensure that these projects are, are, are advanced uh, using other companies, uh, them raising the capital and them funding the exploration. And it really just provides us and our shareholders with multiple irons in the fire. You're not just getting exposure to the drilling and the discovery. Uh, and, and resource expansion potential at our core projects at Moore and Russell, but you're also getting exposure to various drill programs across the Athabasca Basin at some of these other 100% owned properties that are being funded by, the, by these various partner companies. So just to wrap up, and then I'll hand it over for some Q&A. Uh, it's been a, a transformational few years for the company. Um, again, for those that have been following for a number of years. Um, a lot's happened uh, in particular in the last couple of years. Um, we've got now one of the largest uh, land positions um, uh, across 24 projects, over half a million hectares. Projects that range from earlier stage exploration properties as a part of our prospect generator business, right through to more advanced stage exploration assets that do host resources and historical high grade uranium in previous drilling. Uh, the two projects obviously that we're actively advancing being Russell Lake and Moore Lake and bringing in partners to advance the secondary project. So the key catalyst coming up, the 10,000 meter drill program, can't emphasize this enough. Uh, very, very happy with what we're seeing thus far and a lot more to come. Uh, so that uh, you'll see a continued news flow on that uh, over the coming weeks and coming months with plans for additional drilling at Russell Lake later this year. We are also planning, as I mentioned, additional drilling and work programs at Moore Lake in conjunction with the work and the drilling that we're carrying out at Russell. And we have started a resource estimate at Moore Lake as well. And then the various partner companies, um, we're expecting of the seven partner companies, at least uh, three or four of them to be drilling and or carrying out significant exploration programs over the next 12 to 18 months. And keep an eye out for additional new partner companies uh, that we are looking to bring in at some of these other recently staked or acquired projects. Uh, so with that, I will hand it over to Dave and uh, to anyone that's listening in that has any questions. Great. Thank you very much, Jordan. Uh, great. Uh, you, you cover everything uh, every time you speak. So it's uh, going to be hard to find uh, some places to go with this question and answer period, but we will try. So it does sound like a very busy year. 
Um, so we are in the Q&A portion now, everyone. So please, reminder on the line, to type your questions into the chat box at any time, and we'll get to as many as we can. So, Jordan, we've seen a pretty nice rebound in the stock over the last uh, week or two or so, and you know we're starting to see uranium prices pick up again. You know, they're up two bucks this week alone to about 54 bucks a pound yesterday. So despite being an exploration company, you know, far away from production, uh, how does Sky Harbor trade in tandem with uranium? prices yeah it's a, it's a good question i mean we, we've definitely seen a uh in a, a, an increase in the positive correlation with with the the share price and uh and and the uranium uh market and um i'll call it larger uranium mining companies so um it, it, you know i think part of that is um you know it's it's now one of the it's still a junior company but one of the larger junior companies uh in in the athabasca and you know when we talk about um you know the the, the universe of uranium companies there's dave we've talked about this offline but you know there's the developers the producers there's you know you look at cameco and kaz Adamcrom, which represent of the 40 billion dollars in combined market cap right uh across the sector they're about half of that uh, and then in the Athabasca Basin, you've got the developers, the denizens, the next gens, the fissions. Um, and then it, there's a pretty big drop off to the um, uranium, um, they'll call it larger uranium juniors or explore co's. And then there's, you know, there's a handful of companies um, as well that have entered the basin that are smaller and micro cap companies. But given that we're now in most of the uranium mining ETFs and uh, we've seen the liquidity pick up, um, when the uranium price is moving higher, you do see the, uh, the, the, the our, our share price and some of our direct peers uh, move in tandem with that, which is great because you don't always see that with, you know, with gold, copper, some of the other larger market metals. Um, you do have, you know, in some situations, a bit of a lag where the, the, the metal price is moving, but the junior companies in the Explore Coast, uh, they, they move later on in the cycle. We've seen with Sky Harbor, at least in the last few years, um, it moves in tandem. And, and given that it is a smaller cap company, you get a little more torque uh, to those price moves. Um, you know, it's great when it's moving higher, obviously, when it's moving down um, you know, it, 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 it's a little riskier, but I think if you're a bull on the uranium uh, price and market going forward, you definitely want to have some exposure to some of these smaller cap companies that do offer that, um, that offer some more torque and leverage that rising uranium price. Perfect. Okay. That bodes well for Sky Harbor when uranium prices are rising. So Good. Um, you just acquired that South Dufferin project. Uh, interesting area, long trend into the south of Cameco's Centennial Deposit. And I, I think they've hit 9% over 34 meters. Cameco's Dufferin Lake Deposit's about 13 kilometers away, 1.7% over 6.5 meters. What does this tell us about the potential of the project? Because that's not a trend that's very well uh, uh, explored, if you will. Yeah, look, the, the I mean, I think that says a lot, it, you know, that, so that main uh, corridor, conductive corridor, um, at Virgin River shear zone, and there's, you know, several high grade zones um, uh, along that. And at base, it's a major structure um, that kind of bisects the Athabasca Basin. Um, and uh, so you have the Centennial deposit just to the north of us. You just, you just highlighted some of the, the better drill results there. So it's, it's, it's a high grade uraniferous corridor and um, as you saw in the presentation um, you know Denison's had that ground uh, that is host to the, the continuation or the extension of those high grade conductive corridors uh, further to the south so the primary target at South Dufferin would be basement hosted uh, high grade zones and uh, uh, it, it's a project as I pointed out that was in the JNR portfolio so uh, our head geologist Dave Bayard uh, knows the property very, very well. And and uh, what we'd like to do there, as I pointed out, is to find a partner company that can come in. We have 100% of it. There's no uh, underlying encumbrances on the project. Uh, the, the claims are in good standing for a, a number of years as there's been you know fairly extensive amount of exploration and drilling carried out on it. Um, and so it's, you know, it's at that drill ready, discovery ready stage. So we'd like to bring in a, 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 a solid partner company can come in and, and fund that work. I think a part of the reason that um, the it's it's somewhat underexplored in that part of the Athabasca is just it, it has been relatively remote. But with a lot of the work that's being done on the west side and obviously more uh, work and, and um, development on the east side, um, you know, the, this middle southern part of the basin, 
uh, I think is is a great place to be looking. We we haven't had much exposure uh, to this this sub region of the basin historically, so it, it's it's an exciting new deal for us. Mm -hmm. And what does this mostly script deal also say about Denison wanting to pick up some additional shares in Sky Harbor? You know, Denison must like what you're doing in the basin. Yeah, look, I mean, we've you know, as I think most know, and and you know, we highlight this. They've they've been a very very uh, important strategic partner for us for a number of years. We've built a, a great working relationship with with Dave and the team at Denison, and and you know, as you know, Denison is laser focused right now on developing. Um, one of the next producing mines in the Athabasca Basin at, at Phoenix and at Wheeler. So um, we've done a good job uh, with this prospect generator uh, business. Um, and I think, you know, Dave and the team at Denison recognize that. And, you know, we're, we're going to go out there now and we're going to uh, look for a partner company that can come in and, and um, you know, do the necessary work and fund the work uh, at, uh, at, at South Dufferin. And yeah, look, Denison's been a large shareholder now uh, since uh, 2016. Um, and this uh, ad, and they've they've held every share that that they've that they've acquired, whether it was through project acquisitions or through financing uh, that they participated in. So we know they're uh, they've been a very long term loyal shareholder. We're very happy to have them increase that position, and and so this deal made a lot of sense for both for both companies. Great. And Russell Lake, you know, mentioned you mentioned that earlier. You're quite excited about that project. You've known about it for a long time. Just not, despite the fact it's not as advanced as Moore Lake. Why do you call Russell Lake a co-flagship project? Yeah, I, I think the way that the way we view it is, yes, Moore Lake. There's a small deposit there. You know, it, it's at a point now where um, you know we're working on the resource estimate. There's a lot of exploration upside still at Moore Lake, but you know, you, you it's a more advanced stage exploration project. Russell Lake is, uh, you know, we, we deem it to be an advanced stage exploration project, but it doesn't have a defined resource yet. Uh, what it does have is a, a lot of ground in one of the most prospective parts geologically of the Athabasca Basin, proximal to Wheeler River, uh, adjacent to Wheeler River, proximal to Phoenix and Griffin, proximal to MacArthur and Key Lake. Um, and so from an exploration standpoint, it's, it's really as exciting a project as you can get in our view. Uh, going out there and uh, ultimately looking to deliver uh, a new high-grade uh, discovery and deposit in the basin. And, and, you know, you and I have talked about the strategy there. You know, this is a very exciting time for us being able to now actually go out and execute on that uh, with this initial drill program. As I said before, we're, we're confident that we're going to find something there uh, or, you know, just go back into previously known zones and, you know, find uh, what, what, previously had not been found uh, and look to basically discover new areas in and around known high grade zones uh, that just weren't systematically drill tested that that you know that like the geological model and the strategy has changed a little bit and so we're now you know employing that new strategy and model and we think we're going to have success and we think it's going to deliver a lot of value for our shareholders. Mm -hmm. When might we get an exploration update for the project? I think you're what halfway through about a ten thousand meter program, which is pretty aggressive for an early stage program. Yeah, yeah. So we, you know, as we announced, we're we're carrying out a, it's a, a, a multi phase ten thousand meter drill program. So we were typically drilling three to four thousand meters at a time, taking a break, kind of going through at least visually what we're seeing. We've got Condor Consulting. Uh, there, who, who's, who's done a lot of work uh, for us on this project, basically stitching together all the historical drill data and geophysics uh, and all of the geological information. So there's a lot that goes into, you know, the targeting and the strategy for the drilling. And so we're, we're uh, as I said, we're about halfway through the program, just over halfway through the program, um, still going to be, uh, still got a lot more drilling planned. But like I said, um, you know, we'll wait till we get the numbers in, obviously, but uh, we're, we're very, very, uh, very pleased with what we're seeing thus far uh, with this initial few holes and in, in few phases of drilling that we've completed. All right. Okay. And you spoke about earning 51% uh, in the project by this time next year. Does Rio Tinto have any desire or choice to maintain any, any interest in the project? Well, if we if we do elect to form the joint venture, um, fit, let's say it's fifty one forty nine or seventy thirty, then it just reverts to a, a pretty standard joint venture agreement whereby Rio can elect. We propose budgets. Rio can elect to fund their pro rata portion um, and or not. And if they do not uh, uh, elect to fund their portion, then we dilute them out. So there 
there is a mechanism for us to actually get to 100% through that. Um, but you know, that that's that's for down the road. Um, for us right now, it's all about just completing that initial 51%. And then at that point with all of the drilling, we'll probably have close to 15,000 meters, 15 to 20,000 meters of drilling complete at that point. Um, and lots of uh, assay numbers and, and lots of uh, new data that we can use to, to make the decision as to whether we want to lock in the JV or whether we want to keep spending to earn up to 70 and then ultimately to 100. Look, it's a win-win for us in, in our view in that having Rio as a JV partner, um, uh, if we do go 51-49 or 70-30, we'd love to have them as a JV partner, as a project partner. But if we, you know, if we're if we're successful in finding a major, major, major new deposit there, uh, and it makes sense for us to buy them out, one hundred percent, we do have a pathway to get there. And that's your choice. And that, yes, correct. Okay, great. So your initial resource estimate of Moore Lake is this going to cover basement hosted and unconformity hosted mineralization, and and I'm assuming Maverick and East Maverick zones as well. Uh, yeah, I will. Um, most of the mineralization, uh, just a quick note on that, most of the mineralization that is there is unconformity hosted, basically sandstone hosted, straddling the unconformity, hence why I mentioned, uh, you know, us looking internally a little closer at potential for ISR or SAVER uh, to be used ultimately as an extraction or mining method. Uh, for that mineralization. But as you know, the recent drilling that we've done has been focused on basement hosted um, uranium, uh, high grade uranium uh, below that sandstone, below the unconformity. And we are finding new high grade zones, in particular the East Maverick zone. And so that's where future drilling will be focused, along with some of the other regional targets uh, at the property. There's about a dozen other regional targets that are mineralized that have uh, have had limited uh, drill testing historically. So that, like I said, there's lots of blue sky left uh, at uh, at Moore Lake, but we figured, you know what, we've, we've there's been a lot of drilling um, at the Maverick corridor, in particular at the uh, at those uh, couple of Maverick high grade lenses. And it probably makes sense now to, you know, put put a number out there, get a number out there in terms of a mineral uh, resource estimate. Uh, and then that can help us determine, okay, do we want to continue trying to expand that or do we, do we want to uh, focus future drilling at some of these regional targets? Right, okay. So what, what do you think that resource estimate will do for Sky Harbor? Well, I, I, I you know, I think it'll, I think one, it'll, you know, Add, it adds pounds to the uh, to our uh, net asset value, right? It gives it gives investors an idea of what's there. I, I think you know most of um, that you know have been following Sky Harbor and know the project probably can do you know a back of the napkin estimate uh, as is. But uh, it also gives us uh, something uh, more to work with when we actually look at, as I pointed out, if we're if we're uh, evaluating the potential uh, again we don't have any reports or economic assessments on this yet but evaluating the the potential for isr and or saber um, as it is relatively shallow mineralization it's about 250 to 280 meters and as i pointed out most of it currently is hosted in the sandstone right at the unconformity Great. Okay, that that's a perfect segue into my next question. You know, I think uranium investors know what ISR or in situ recovery is all about, but you also mentioned Saber, which really isn't that well known. I think uh, Arano just finished about five years of testing on that. Can you maybe give us a little teaser on what this surface access, uh, excuse me, surface access borehole resource uh, extraction is? It's a tongue twister. Yeah. So um, yeah, no. I, so it it is a proprietary. Um, mining method or technique uh, as a part of the McLean Lake JV with Arano and Denison. You can get a, glean a little bit of information from it, from some of uh, Denison's material and, and online a little bit, but uh, it's, it's, it's a very interesting um, uh, new, call it relatively new mining method or technique specific to the Athabasca Basin where you're, you're essentially drilling a borehole down, you're mining from surface, so you're drilling a borehole down and you're jet boring um the 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 rock and you know ideally the the the, the high grade uranium or pitch blend uh mineralization and what it what it creates is a a cavity underground where you've got this high grade uranium water mixture and you're basically uh pumping that up to surface and shipping it to the mill um now needless to say you gotta 
you got to pump down pressurized water and then you got to pump up uh, this high grade uranium uh, and water slurry or mixture. So there are depth constraints to it. Uh, but uh, as you pointed out, Arano has been and Denison have been working on this for a while uh, and uh, they've been re-engineering it and um, uh, looking at uh, getting a little bit deeper with it. Um, and so this is something that could be of interest for us uh, at, at, at Maverick, given that it's a relatively shallow, high grade, couple of zones of smaller zones of, of, of mineralization. Yeah, and smaller footprint on the surface as well, I think. Correct, yeah, I mean, that's the other great thing with it is, is your, you know, it's, a, it's just a drill rig, right? And, uh, and so you're, you're, you, you, can, you can selectively mine certain zones, right? You can go in there and it's, it's ideal for, again, these kind of smaller, higher grade deposits um, that, uh, and there's, you know, there's quite a few of them in the basin, right? Yeah, yeah. And as for as for ISR as well, that's relatively new to the basin too. Uh, but Denison's moving forward. That so far so good, and you've got a good relationship with Denison. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, they've they they're trailblazing with it, right? Um, they've done a, a phenomenal job um, uh, over the last few years uh, since announcing it back in in 2018, and uh, um, I, I I I you know I expect that they'll be producing when they when they say they'll be uh, planning to be in production and uh, yeah it's it's um it really can open up um, a lot of new deposits in the Athabasca Basin um, you know this is a new mining method for the basin it's certainly not a new mining method globally but hasn't been used yet in the Athabasca and uh, Denison will be the first one to uh, utilize it at the Phoenix deposit. Great, great. So you did go over several of your strategic assets uh, alliances earlier, but are there any that really stick out to you, you know, either from recent success or long-term potential that you just don't pe believe people realize, you know, I know, I know Jordan, you love all your children equally, but I'm looking for a favorite. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a tough question. I mean, look, I, I, I you know, I, I commend Azincourt for the work that they've done um, at East Preston. And I, I do think that, you know, that project, just given where they've come, particularly in the last few years with the drilling, um, what they're what they're kind of vectoring in on, um, you, you know, it's 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 a very exciting property and in, in, an, in a part of the basin too that, you know, has garnered a lot of uh, investor excitement uh, through new discoveries, um, you know, obviously the next gens and fissions, but more recently F3. And, and so, you know, it's, it's in an exciting part of the basin and they've done a fantastic job um getting the project to where it is um i'm excited I, you know as i kind of went through all of them i'm look i'm excited for tisdale um later this year because that's a new a new project that we've optioned um a new partner that a new partner that's come in and it's it's our largest and richest option deal and you know as you and i have talked about dave we do have pounds at that property um, we didn't want to give it away um you know it's 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 very important to us that um the right operator come in and and do good work at the project, there's still a lot of value to unlock there, whether it's through resource expansion at the existing uh, deposit and or um, a long trend, there's lots of uh, untested or relatively under tested conductors um, and, and conductive corridors along trend from the deposit. So uh, yeah, Tisdale's gearing up for a program, a very capable group, and uh, we're, we're excited for them to start. Uh, the work there, um, and and Mert, uh, at Madero at Urchison, um, you know this is a property that you know had a little bit of drilling carried out in the mid 2000s, and um, uh, it really hasn't seen a lot of exploration uh, over the last 15 years. And, and Madero is planning a drill program there, and I think that that in general is kind of a, a key takeaway. Is you know a number of these properties, Man Lake's another good example of that with base and uranium where. You're going, you know, these partner companies are going into properties that, you know, have had, you know, very little exploration and money invested in them uh, over the last 10 years. We've incubated them, we've done what we can, but really these companies are now using new techniques, new exploration methodologies to go into these, these you know, geologically prospective projects and, and hopefully make new discoveries. So, you know, any program that one of the partners uh, is carrying out uh, is exciting for us and our shareholders because if they find anything, um, whether it's through our uh, ownership in them, the share share ownership in them, the minority interest that we typically like to retain at the end of the earn-in option, 
and or through the, the NSRs that we typically also keep on these properties um, through that those various ownership uh, assets in, in the project and in the company, you know, Sky Harbor and our shareholders stand to benefit quite a bit from that. Okay. Yeah, so hard to pick a favorite, but at least you've narrowed it down from 24 to 4 or 5. So. <laughs> yeah. Good. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, you know, just to uh, wrap it up here, a couple more questions. What's the demand for some of your project generation properties right now? Are you still seeing a lot of interest from ASX or uh, private companies? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, the, the, you know, there was a lot of ASX interest last year. Um, you know, I wouldn't say it's slowed down, but, you know, along with the market and just the ability to raise capital for exploration, you know, it's not as robust as it was a year ago. Now, that being said, you know, that can change quickly. Um, we are having, we, 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 we're seeing a little, maybe a little bit less interest from um, Australian companies. We're definitely seeing more interest from uh, private companies that are looking to go public um in in canada and uh in in the us um and as well from you know companies that are already in the athabasca that are looking to expand uh, their portfolios right i mean that's you know that really what we want to try to build here is uh, an inventory of projects that um uh, that we can then go and look to deal on um and we, we obviously have to you know do what we can to vet the partner companies to make sure that they're able to to complete the earnings but um and so and so part of that process is you know if we if we recognize that you know there is a, a potential partner um that has experience in the athabasca base and has been able to finance and fund uh, various other projects um you know that's that's an attractive potential partner for us so yeah i mean I, you know part the partnerships uh, and and potential new partners that that does ebb and flow uh, with the market, right? So, you know, as we as we've seen the the uranium market and price move higher, and you know the equity market, uh, you know, doing well, um, we typically get a lot more interest. And in, you know, in times when uh, things are a little bit tougher, there's it's more subdued, right? So it, you know, it kind of comes and goes, or ebbs and flows with with the market. I expect we're going to see um, you know a, a, a very strong year with the uranium price and market and I expect we'll see a number of, of new partner companies uh, over the course of the next 12 to 18 months at some of these other properties we have an option yet great great okay uh, last question today uh, and this investor must be from Vancouver because I know everybody in Toronto is focused on the Maple Leafs today but Jordan who do you think the Chargers will draft today in the NFL draft <laughs> I think I might know who that is. I don't know. I don't want to guess. The Chargers are are uh, <laughs> they're a cursed franchise. So as much as I love them, they're they're not the greatest team to cheer for. But uh, hopefully, yeah. hopefully, hopefully they do okay next season. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I watch NFL in the winter, and that's about it. So yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'm excited. Baseball season is here. So yeah. great. Okay, let's uh, let's wrap it up that uh, with that. Jordan, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for uh, for tuning in. Reminder, Red Cloud Securities will be back on Monday afternoon. Taylor will be sitting down with Abcourt Mines. So that's May 1st. It's May already. So And that's at 2 p.m. Eastern. So have a great day, everyone. Thank you very much.